Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and some things go together like peanut butter and jam, which is kind of funny because I don't actually like peanut butter, I hate it to be honest, and I don't like jam, but I do like the Lua programming language, and I do like the Godot game engine, and we're going to look at how to use those two things together. Now first off, if you've never heard of it before, Lua is a very simple programming language, and one of the shining strengths of Lua is its ability to be embedded in other languages or in other environments, so you can use Lua for logic script quite simply. So it's been used in a number of game engines in the past. On the topic of game engines, I am sure that you have heard of the Godot game engine if you are a subscriber of this channel. If not, hey, hit that like and subscribe button and stay up to date on the latest greatest in the world of game development. But Godot is an open source and free game engine, and one of the nice things about Godot is it's got a nice extensive system. In fact, the built-in language of Godot, GDScript, is implemented as a module. So anything can kind of implement the same level of script hook as the their own built-in scripting language. And what we're looking at today is an in-development in, in project called the Godot Lua plugin script. And this is uh, Godot plugin script for the Lua language, currently based on Lua JIT FFI. So it uses Lua JIT, which by the way, JIT stands for just in time. It is a fast version of Lua. Um, it's GD native plus plugin script library that adds support for Lua as a scripting language in Godot. Uh, being a GD native library, recompiling the engine is not required. Uh, if you're using a module, you do have to actually rebuild Godot from C++ source. So this makes it really, really easy to work with this plugin. In fact, we're gonna show you the entire process from beginning to end. So there's a couple of steps we're going to need to do. You need to go to the releases and download the Lua plugin script release. I've already done so. Uh, it is available right about, oh, I already closed the window. All right, let's open that window back up again. Uh, it's in my downloads. It is available right here, Lua script plugins. Open that one up and you're going to notice there is an add-ons folder there. We just dropped that into our project, which by the by, we need to go ahead and create. So here we are. Uh, one of the funny things that you'll notice going on here is if I don't maximize my browser, uh, we have a, uh, a Unity down here for other things I'm working on right now, and soon we're going to have Godot icons side by side. There's just something something weird about those coexisting. Uh, I'm going to create a new project. Uh, let's, let's go with our same convention, Lua, uh, and we'll drop that in our temp folder because that is the way. All right, so go ahead, create that one. And we've got our new project. Now, unfortunately, uh, when you do drop an add-in into a, a project like this, you do need to restart the project for it to show up. So what I'm going to do is go here, and I'm going to open that up in the file manager. So this is the root of our project. And again, we just go to the uh, add-on we just downloaded, grab the add-ons folder, Control-C, Control-V, and we've pasted the contents in. So you're gonna notice inside of that, there is the Godot, Godot Lua, or Lua, uh, uh, plugin available right now. So now all we need to do is basically shut down. All right, we're good to go. Uh, and we will go back to Godot, fire it up again, and then reopen our project. Oh, I just think I just opened the wrong one. I did. Don't. All right. So this is the downside of, uh, I thought the most recent would automatically be put at the top, but apparently no. So here we go. We're going to open the one we just created, not the one that I did as a test earlier on. All right, so Godot is going to open up. Here is our new project. So now we have, if you go into the project settings, project settings, GD native, you will notice uh, the Lua plugin script plugin is automatically available. So let's look at how we actually use this guy. So first things first, let's create a simple scene like so and something to do in the scene. So we're going to just drop in the icon. This will automatically create a... Um, Sprite 2D, or Sprite class for us right there. And we're gonna go ahead and attach a script to it. So you're gonna notice when you do an attach a script, languages will now show a new option of Lua. So we click Lua here, it inherits from Sprite. Uh, we can give it a name, icon.lua, yeah, that sounds good to me. So there is our new Lua script attached to our scene. There's not a whole lot going on, but you can see it gives you a simple template uh, of Lua class. And what it's doing is basically creating a new Lua, temple, a new Lua uh, table and returning it at the end. So all of your logic goes basically in between this declaration here and here. So what we could do, or you could actually do a lot of the declaration inside here if you want to do it all in sequence, uh, but I'm going to do it in a um, more sprawling manner here. So now we're gonna do some simple code. So let's just handle the, um, the ready function. So when this is created, we're just gonna print to the console. So we're gonna implement a new function. So we're adding it to our, oh, oh I guess it's called it icon. Icon table, like so. So this is the name of our class. Uh, and we are calling a function. So you see here we're using the colon instead of the dot. And then we're overriding ready. 
So this was inherited. Reddit is inherited from Node2D, which Sprite inherits from. Um, Lua is a uh, white space language. So we're just going to drop down a new line. And we will just go ahead and say print and ready. So this is going to call uh, ready, if you're not a regular of Godot, uh, is basically called in the lifecycle when a node is created and ready to go. So it will be called only once. And then finally, end. So this is ending our function. And then make sure that this code is before the uh, return of the table, because this is actually what's going to expose our class out to the world. So that is the extent of the code that you need to do. I will go ahead and run this. So yep. Eh, oh, I haven't saved our scene yet. All right, so let's go back here. We'll save our scene. Sure. All right, let's go ahead and run it. Yep, pick our scene. There we go. So we just ran our code, and you're going to notice right away it calls out, and it is, in fact, ready. So that is kind of it. Now let's do something slightly more advanced. Let's do another function here. This is another one of the Unity callbacks available. So um, again, the name of our class is icon. So we're overriding the function process. Like so it is passed in the delta of time that has elapsed. So this is called every single frame, um, or technically every pass through the game loop when our logic needs to update. And we're just going to go ahead. So you can see self. Self is kind of like this. Uh, it's it's a referring to um, the the value itself. So if we wanted to do, um, if we had variables, we could do self dot my variable uh, equals and update things like that. But instead, we're going to call as a function. So we're going to do self. Um, colon, and then say uh, move local x. So what you're going to see is we have access to all of the um, the GD script calls that you would normally make use of. Uh, they're all available this way and can be accessed this manner. So now we're going to go ahead and run that and really simple update. And there we go. Now we've got some logic going on. So if you really want to, uh, you can implement all of your game logic using the Lua programming language if you so wish. Now this is a very much in process project. Uh, as you see, it integrates nicely into, you're getting syntax highlighting going on here, uh, but there are some things that he is still working on with this release. So uh, you can check out, by the way, the references available. I will link this in the linked article down below. So if you wanna go ahead and check out um, some of the things that are, are going on here, it's all available here. You can see some sample code in action. Uh, you can see the things that have currently been implemented, such as uh, Lua JIT is in there, but Lua 5.2 has not been implemented yet. Um, You've got a number of GD native objects defined, yield functions works. It's a great way of dealing with signals, etc. cetera. Uh, language definitions are in place, so they still need to add uh, code editor callbacks, debug callbacks, profiling callbacks. So if you want to use uh, those tools, the profiling tools, the debugger, and that kind of stuff, it's not going to be a fun experience as of yet. Uh, there is a simple REPL uh, that's uh, run evaluate. Uh, what does REPL stand for? Read, evaluate, print loop. It's basically kind of like a simple command line you can use. Uh, there is one available, so you can actually run your code uh, directly in here. I forget where the REPL code actually runs. Uh, but you can actually run uh, Lua codes one line, uh, one line at a time, if you so wish. So you can actually see, <coughs> kind of interact with the code. It's a nice way of learning how Lua works, by the way. Uh, so REPL support is in place, uh, but... Uh, Example projects need to be added, export plugin to minify Lua scripts, uh, drop in binary release in GitHub, and uh, submit to the asset library. This is so you can actually go ahead and grab this guy uh, via the asset lib over here, which will make the installation process a lot easier. But as it stands right now, uh, it's, it's not that hard to install. Basically, just grab the release, add it into the add-ons folder, and you are good to go. And that is kind of the extent of things right now. Of course, all the relevant links will be uh, available down below. I did do a tutorial series on Lua. I will link to that as well. I did that as part of uh, Learning Game Development with Love series. Uh, Lua is a great entry-level programming language for sure. And it's one of those skills that sticks with you because a number of um, things actually use Lua as their scripting interface. So it's a, it's a useful language to learn. And it's the kind of thing you can learn in a weekend. So uh, that is the, uh, what is it called again? The uh, Godot Lua plugin script plugin. Uh, this was actually fairly recently released. So if I go back here and look at the releases, the last one was seven days ago. As you can see, it's pretty actively updated. Well, actually, it was updated seven days ago when the release happened. Uh, again, it's an entirely open source project too, uh, under the MIT license. I don't know that there's a ton of reasons right now why you would want to use Lua over GDScript unless you just simply prefer working in Lua. But there are huge swaths of Lua code out there. So I guess that is a pretty good solid reason. And there's some people that actually think that Lua should have been 
in the built-in scripting language uh, in Godot from day one. The nice thing about Godot, though, is you can easily add language support, especially scripting language support with the way things are implemented. And uh, if you want to go ahead and check out Lua as a programming language for the Godot game engine, well, this is an option out there. There are a couple other projects, by the way, uh, but this is the most uh, recent one I have discovered. Again, released just last week. So let me know what you think uh, of the Lua language, of the Godot game engine, of using Lua in Godot. And uh, I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.